What's going on everyone? This is Mitchell Mander here and welcome to another review of the Boruto anime. Today we're going to be covering episode 174. And once again, another great episode and it's all leading up to next week's episode which is going to be essentially, I think the next two episodes are going to be the climax of this arc. And they're setting it up big time. I gotta say, this the ending of this arc has to deliver but I, I enjoyed this episode and hopefully the next couple or next two episodes are great as well. Anyways, uh, if you're new to the channel, you like this type of content, be sure to like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Anyways, uh, let's get on to that review, shall we? So, Konohamaru and Gino are still fighting off the artificial divine tree here, and it actually ends up uh, getting Magino and stuck some of his chakra out, but it also gets the feudal lord, which seemingly knocks him out cold, and he's pretty much going to die if he doesn't get any type of uh, medical uh, assistance. But, but they're all fighting off the divine tree. One of the guys that was affected by the Hashirama cell that basically turned into a zombie is about to hit Konohamaru, which, come on, dude. <laughs> Why do you have to be such a fodder ninja? <laughs> Anyways, um, Konohamaru's about to get struck, and that's when Mujina steps in, and he takes the, the kunai to the chest. I don't know if it hit him in the long or what, but yeah, it got him pretty good. And uh, Victor, on the other hand, he's like, it's al it looks like it's almost done. They... Uh, Konohamaru tries to hit it with a Rasengan, but it just it doesn't stop the Divine Tree from continuing to grow through the ceiling. And uh, Victor has a message for his loyal employees who are just sitting there in that waiting room, or in that meeting room or whatever. He basically tells them, hey, you've all been loyal to me, and uh, I got one last request for you. Could you share your life force with me? And that's when the Divine Tree comes in and strikes. And wow. Yeah, Victor. You bastard. Seriously, sacrificing your employees to just get a chakra fruit? Yeah, you're you're a pretty terrible person. <laughs> Anyways, they managed to escape, and Konohamaru basically tells Magino that you need to take the feudal lord out of here because he's basically the only witness to this going on. So if he dies, yeah, nobody's gonna believe them. So uh, <laughs> take them or take the feudal lord, get him some help, and then contact the Hidden Leaf Village and let them know what the heck's going on here. So, uh, Mugino doesn't want Konohamaru to go on his own, but, you know, he sees he's determined. And, uh, yeah, so, Mugino takes off, even though he's wounded. You could tell that, uh, Mugino didn't quite, uh, heal himself up here, or at least to close his wound, because he's still bleeding out. As he's walking out, there's a trail of blood, so, as, you know, as he's leaving this place, he's getting progressively weaker and weaker because he's losing blood. But anyways, Code Harmer goes back to check out what's going on. He hears a bunch of screams, and that's when he walks into that conference room, and it's like out of a horror movie. Yeah. Just like what happened in the fourth great ninja war, everybody's basically trapped and wrapped up like they were like people were back in the fourth great ninja war with the divine tree and their chakra is gonna be siphoned out of them. And if they don't do something quick about that, they're all gonna be they're most likely gonna become Zetsu. Anyways, Boruto and Sarda arrive on the scene. At first, Konohamaru is a little uh, upset. He's like, why the heck are you guys here? But then he comes to the conclusion that, yeah, we need more power in order to stop this thing. That's when Victor shows up, and he's all obsessed about getting his fruit. <laughs> and, um, yeah, Victor, yeah, he pretty much handles them. He hits them all with one wind style attack, and it takes Konohamaru, Boruto, and Sarda down. <laughs> so, yeah, this guy is something else. But he's just so obsessed about this tree, so um, he ends up using an earth style technique to uh, l or basically uh, drop Borto and Sarda to their deaths down below while he handles Konohamaru on his own. That being said, Borto and Sarda are able to avoid dying here. Also, I want to mention just really briefly, it seems like uh, Victor obtained a sample from the Divine Tree from the 4th Great Ninja War, so was this guy planning to do this for like 15 plus years because, or did he go back to where the divine tree was at and obtain a sample that way not really sure but yeah dude you were in the fourth great ninja war why are you trying to recreate that <laughs> anyways while all this is going on deepa ends up waking up yeah he's a little annoyed because uh, victor didn't notify him that he was uh, going through with the plan this early so he wakes up and he ends up confronting Borto and Sarda. They were trying to go back upstairs to help out Konohamaru against Victor, but that's when Deepa shows up. 
And the one interesting thing here is he doesn't seem to remember Boruto and Sarada at first, so it seems like this guy has some memory problems, which is kind of consistent because he didn't really remember Shikadai and the others in that episode, of, I think it was 168. So maybe there's something up with his brain where he just can't remember people or something like that, but uh, he's laughing at them, he's like, yeah, I'll just, I'll kill you this time. And apparently this time he wants to eat Boruto and Sarada. I know a lot of people were wondering if he was a cannibal or not, but it seems to be confirmed here, but there's actually, the reason why that Deepa is actually doing all the harm he does and why he's helping out Victor here, and why he's probably part of Kara is because he just wants to taste the finest foods. That's what it seems. I know the guy is, he likes fine dining, but yeah, it seems like that's his goal, which is kind of weird. <laughs> so he just wants to try out the chakra fruit for that reason, which this pisses off Borto and Sarada, who are even more motivated than ever to take down this guy. And this time they're like, yeah, we vow to defeat you this time. <laughs> so there are two more things I want to mention here. So Mia is wondering what's going on as she continues to hear tremors coming from Victor's uh, facility. That's when you see a bunch of people evacuating from the land of valleys because uh, Victor intends on uh, feeding everybody to the divine tree that's in the land of valleys. So everybody is escaping and it seems like some of the employees managed to get out of that conference because uh, yeah he talks to me and he's like I don't really know anything something about sharing life force ah, I'm out of here. <laughs> but yeah it seems like some people actually managed to get out of there and Mia gets super curious and she's uh, yeah stupid girl is seemingly she's heading to the facility and she might end up getting herself uh you know taken by the divine tree so uh why are you doing that mia come on now use your brain and lastly Mugino, he's escorting the feudal lord seemingly out of the village he's at the edge of the village and he gets confronted by victor's secretary and because Mugino has lost too much blood he can't really battle very effectively so victor's secretary is about ready to take him out and that's when she's confronted by a hooded man and she basically gets Thanos snapped out of existence. Turns out that man in the hood is none other than Orochimaru. And this was quite a surprise, I'm not gonna lie. That was a pretty cool entrance, dude. <laughs> but there's also a small, uh, an another little guy that's uh, hooded that's uh, seemingly helping out, uh, is maybe gonna help out Mugino, maybe give him some blood in the next episode. But I'm wondering who this is. I'm thinking it's either a Mitsuki or a Shin Uchiha clone. Not really sure. It's really hard to tell at this point, but yeah, somebody's assisting Orochimaru. So yeah, we're gonna see Orochimaru in action. So that was that was a pretty pretty cool twist here. I like that. Gotta give uh, the episode extra points for that one. So yeah. So I gotta say I really like how everything is kind of wrapping up here in this arc. I think this we might be in for a satisfying conclusion to this arc. One complaint I do have in the Boruto anime is a lot of these the anime original arcs start out interesting but the ending they just can't land so I'm hoping the ending for this arc lands because this will probably end up being the best uh, anime original arc from the Boruto series because man it's just been so great especially especially lately it's just there's been a few duds here and there but overall this car activation arc has been fantastic and I'm definitely looking forward to the next two episodes so that's all I got for this review. So overall, a pretty solid episode. I'd say the episode is worthy for an 8 out of 10. So guys in the comment section down below, what do you think of this episode? What do you think of the car actuation arc as a whole? Just give me your overall thoughts. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I'll talk to you all later. You all stay safe out there. And have a great day or night wherever you're at. Peace.